Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about some tips that I have for pre-nursing college students. So if you're in high school or you're in college or you are in nursing school and you're just really bored or whatever, um, I hope that these tips can help you. And it's kind of just a bunch of random stuff. Um, I don't want to talk about like GPA and stuff in this video because I know that you know you need good grades to get into nursing school and good test scores. These are just all the other things that I think are also very valuable and important and important. So, let's get on to the video. So I wrote them all down right here, so I'm just going to be reading off of this, but um, my first tip is to have prerequisites from several schools printed and organized. So what I mean by this is I literally have this whole organizer um, for nursing schools. So I don't know what to call this, but it's basically just like one of those little accordion things. Um, and it has a bunch of programs that I've looked at, like some of the ones I, I didn't even apply to um, or visit or anything, I put them all in here. So I'm just going to pull out a few of them to kind of show you what I've put in here. Um, okay, this first one's UTMBs. So basically they required the T's for their application and I do have a T's video on my channel so I will link that down in the description if you want some advice on the T's. Um, so I downloaded my individual performance profile from that and it shows the breakdown of my score, so like my overall score, my reading, math, science, and English score. So I have a copy of that in here just because I know that they require that and I want to like mentally mark that I've finished that. Um, also in here is their open house folder. So they gave this to us when I went to Galveston. Um, and in here I have business cards for three different contacts. One was the recruiter, um, just because she's in charge of like student affairs and admissions. And she actually is the one that I talked to you about my YouTube video that I published. So that was really fun. Um, also um, the advisors, so the BSN admissions counselor and the pre-BSN admissions counselor both were helpful with answering questions about prerequisites or just like with everything going on right now, um, like what kind of changes they are having because they did have to extend their deadline so that people have time to take their T's because a lot of testing centers were canceling that. Um, and they also, this school in particular, allows you to email them your transcripts to see if you're competitive. So just all those little notes that I would need to look at one day, because I went to this way before I even applied or even um, was able to apply for nursing school. So yeah, just having these notes so that when I did apply, I could look through it helps a lot. Um, so I put that in here. Also, waitlist numbers, they gave those to us at the open house, so I like to just know kind of where I sit. Some people don't like to know that information because it stresses them out, but I'm a big numbers person, so I just wanted to know how many people um, are on the waitlist, how many come off, how long it takes for nursing cast to verify um, your transcript, um, just basically the whole timeline. So I wrote that in here, um, and it helped me a lot when I was going through that whole process. And then the most important thing that I keep in here, and I keep them for all of the schools, is a copy of their prerequisite degree requirements. And so basically, it's like the class, where I took it, so um, if I took it at A&M or Blinn or San Antonio College or AP Credit, wherever I took it, I have that noted next to it, and then the grade that I got so that I can calculate my overall um, prerequisite GPA and nursing science GPA. So all of that's in here and that has helped me a lot too just to like know what my GPA is and where I stand because every school has a different prerequisite list. So for example some schools didn't even include biology or didn't include statistics or did include another class and vice versa. So just knowing my prerequisite GPA per program has helped me know where I stand basically and also just comparing them to admitted student statistics. Um, and then I also have like just a little overview of each program, so um, how long their their program is. Like this one is four semesters and 16 months. Um, some of them are 15 months, some of them are two years. Some of them you get summers off, some of them you don't. So just having that all right here so that I can compare them based on like where I want to attend. Um, the requirements to apply to the school. So some of the schools in here require that you're completely finished with all your nursing sciences before you apply. Some of them require that you're finished with at least two of them or at least four of them or whatever. Um, so I have the list per school and what they require. Um, and then the admissions requirements. So upon admission, what you would need to make sure you complete. 
Um, so completing the rest of your prerequisites, getting your BLS certificate, everything that you need, immunizations, all of that I have in here as well. And then any brochures and just fun stuff that they gave us, I threw in each of those as well. So yeah, so that is basically just one of the folders, but that's how all of them look. Um, and I keep them all in this little accordion style thing, just so that it's easy access. Um, a lot of my friends or people in my um, organizations on campus think I'm like a nursing school guru and I know everything. And it's really just because I keep everything in this. And so it's helped me like whenever somebody texts me, they're like, hey, um, do you know if I have to take microbiology before I apply? I can literally just pull this out and look at the list and be like, no, you don't. Like I'm basically a nursing school advisor by having this. So this has helped me stay organized a lot. And I really recommend it, especially if you're like not familiar with what you need to do, because it's an easy way to just have a checklist and go through it with like when you're signing up for your classes or when you're signing up to take your exams or anything. It's just so easy to have it all in one place. So that is my first tip. My second tip, my second tip is that you um, know that it's okay to transfer. Um, and I say this because at a lot of universities, um, there's a limited number, or every university, there's a limited number of students that can get into the nursing program. And I'm sure there's a lot more pre-nursing students than that allows for. Um, for example, A&M does not have a pre-nursing major. So we're all just kind of health majors or psychology majors or whatever, um, as long as we get our prereqs done and apply. Um, so with that being said, only like, I think it's like 25 or something, people get in. And so it's important for us to have like backup options or it may not even be our first choice to go to a and nursing school or whatever. Um, knowing that it's okay to go wherever you wanna go, just make sure that you know their prerequisites and you know their requirements because not every school is the exact same. So that was just a really quick second tip, but it's a thousand percent okay to transfer. It's new scenery, it's really exciting. Um, so. I just wanted to let that one be known. Um, tip number three is to verify community college credits. So what I mean by that is if you go to a community college, that's one thing, um, and just know that you're at a community college and you're, if you're applying for a BSN program, you're applying for um, essentially having a four-year degree. Um, and so for those of us who are at four-year universities, some people will be like, oh, I'm gonna take my anatomy over the summer at a community college back home and like, I recommend doing that, um, but it's not like every school likes that. Um, so just know that like you need to look at what programs are okay with that and what programs aren't because I know there are some programs who will take um, somebody who took all their classes at a four year over somebody who took all of their classes at a community college or people who like double dipped and did both. Just know that um, those schools may have a preference and you may wanna check on that before you decide where you're gonna take all of your prerequisites. Um, Tip number four is to space out your nursing sciences. And I also made a little note in here that summer classes are easier to me at least. Um, so I'm graduating in seven semesters total. So I'm graduating just one semester early. Um, and I spaced it out to where I was only taking one summer class or one science class at a time, like nursing science class. Um, like I took several sciences, like new I would take nutrition and biology at the same time, but those classes that have those really long labs, I was trying to take just one a semester. Um, and I know not everyone can do that based on how you're spacing out your classes and when you're applying and where you're going and everything, but I found it a lot easier so that I could focus on that one class in particular, and it just saved me a lot of time and stress. So if you can do that, I recommend it. I found summer classes really easy just because it's like the only class you have to pay attention to for those four or five weeks. Um, some people feel that it's more stressful, so depending on your learning style, um, considering taking summer classes is definitely smart, especially if you're doing um, like a two-year thing where you go to your undergrad for two years and then you go straight into a nursing program because your classes are going to have to be more condensed. So that's just something to think about and something that I recommend doing. Um, tip number five is to have a timeline of testing and application cycles. So what I mean by that is um, no, like no matter where you are right now. So if you're a freshman right now, you may not be necessarily thinking about all of the details of applying to nursing school, but having a general timeline of when you need to start worrying about certain things is important. So like say you wanna take all of your um, 
applic or you want to do all your applications the spring of your sophomore year. So that means you know you need to be testing for your T's or your HESI or whatever you have to take. You know that you need to do that either the winter break before or the fall before. Um, and just having an idea of when you're going to do all those things. And I know plans change and things happen, but it's easier so that you're not stressing about everything at once to have a general idea of when you're going to do it. Um, and some people have asked me when you should take your T's or when you should take your HESI. And my answer to that is kind of wishy-washy because I took my T's literally, like, I okay, I took it January 25th and then I applied to nursing school February 1st. And that's like a really small window. And I knew that the likelihood of me being able to retake it was really small, but it was just something I decided to do because I knew I couldn't afford to take it multiple times. And so I really invested like a lot of time into studying and preparing for the exam so that I could do the best that I possibly could. Um, some people prefer to take it multiple times and that's totally fine. Just make sure your program's okay with it. Um, but yeah, I literally did it right before and it didn't stress me out or anything because I knew that I was only going to take it once anyways. But for some people, like if you don't test well or you're worried about your score, I would recommend taking it earlier so that you do have time to potentially take it again. But with that being said, know that um, the later you take it, the better just because of how the classes work. So if you haven't taken anatomy two, then you may find the anatomy section on your exam really hard. And um, some programs will take that into consideration, but some won't. So that's just something to keep in the back of your head and decide what you want to do. Um, tip number six is to consider spring or summer entry if you feel that you're not competitive enough for fall entry. Um, I'm applying for spring entry, but only because I'm graduating in December. Um, but I also know that getting in for the spring is sometimes a lot less competitive. So, um, that's just a perk of graduating early or graduating a semester late or whatever. Um, same thing with summer programs. They're just not as popular because most people want to start in the fall. So considering one of those options is really smart and it should hopefully be a lower applicant pool so that there's a better chance that you'll get in. Um, it also depends on the school because some only have fall or only have spring or only have summer, but some have all three or two or one of those. So just looking into potentially picking the lower competitive rate there. Um, tip number seven is to join any pre-professional nursing orgs or volunteer orgs, things like that. So I'll just say like what I did. Um, I'm in Future Aggie Nurses. I was a member for a while, then I became the volunteer chair officer, and now I'm vice president. And so basically that organization is, it's at Texas A&M, so if you're going to A&M, I definitely recommend joining. But basically we bring in nursing advisors from a bunch of different schools and just opportunities, and they come share ideas with you, teach you how to apply, give you advice, and just give you a whole rundown of their program. So that's something I've found very useful, especially at A&M, where there's not a lot of people who will get into A&M's program. Um, so it's just given me like a wider understanding of different schools and opportunities I have around me. Um, another org that I joined is Camp Kesem, and that's available at a bunch of different universities. And it's something that I found really, really great. Um, this is my second summer being a counselor, but basically it's a camp for children whose parents have cancer. And so it's um, just like a fun weekend, or sorry, a fun week for them to enjoy being kids again and just be with other kids who understand where they're coming from. And it just it has been a really fun volunteer experience because I get to spend time with a bunch of awesome kids and awesome counselors and just a really positive organization. That's something I'm really passionate about. I really like to um, work around just like dealing with hardships and oncology and things like that. Um, I had a friend in high school that passed away from cancer, so that was something that I personally found very fulfilling, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and there's a bunch of different organizations that are like that. Some people will join Aggie Miracle or um, at any school it'd be like Miracle Network, Children's Miracle Network, those, those kinds of organizations. Um, anything that's volunteer because it gives you a chance to, one, gain exposure, and two, just also being able to talk about that in your application and what you've learned as a person. And 
it's just honestly like the best feeling to volunteer. I love being the volunteer chair for future Aggie nurses because I get to encourage people to volunteer, um, donate blood, just little things like that, especially because we're in college and a lot of us have a lot more free time than we'll ever have again. So just using that time to better the community. So definitely, definitely, definitely recommend um, service organizations and pre-professional organizations that help you better your application and just better your heart, you know? Um, tip number eight is to consider CNA classes or getting an internship. So, um, depending on when you're applying and what your plans are, some people, I didn't do this, but a lot of people that I know did is they got their CNA license or they became, um, I want to, I think it's pharmacy tech assistant. I think that's the title. I could be wrong on that, but just gaining anything that gives you, um, medical exposure, like medical assistant, thing like that. Um, so anything like that can help you gain exposure, um, introduce you to hospitals and people in the area. And if your school allows or requires letters of recommendation, it's an easy way to um, build a relationship with people who can do that for you. So if you could do that, that would be a really good way to better yourself. And then also internships. So I did a home health internship over my last summer. So my summer going into my junior year. Um, and I got to just meet other nurses and do some like patient interactions, just small things like that, that helped me to one, know that this is what I wanna do, and two, also just gain that exposure and get those connections that I would need to apply. Um, tip number nine is to think long and hard about your personal statement. So I wrote this in here, I know not every school requires a personal statement, but if yours does, um, you're not supposed to talk about why you want to help people. And that kind of stinks because most of us are here because we want to help people. And it's easy to go for that and to say, I want to help people. Um, because it's true and like, it's not, it's not a lie, but it's what everyone writes. So try to avoid saying that in general and write about like the experience that made you become who you are and maybe define why you want to help people without specifically saying that. So in my personal statement, I wrote a little bit about my friend with cancer um, and also just some stories I had as a resident advisor um, and just dealing with a lot of hardships and helping people through that and also uh, my volunteer experience and things like that. I can do a whole video on what you should include and should not include in your personal statement if that's something you're interested in. So comment that down below if that's something that you wanna do. Um, but yeah, so just think really long and hard about it because people are going to have beautiful stories, they're going to have sob stories, they're going to have volunteer experience, work experience, and you just want to make them love you um, and make them see that you stand out so that they pick you for the school because there's just so many wonderful people who want to be nurses and you just want to make sure that you're a standout applicant. And my very last tip. Um, I feel like this is a less common one, but it's to visit the school. Um, I know like not everyone's able to visit the school and that's okay. Um, but if you can visit the school, it just, it clears up so much, you guys. Like I was able to um, ask direct questions, like pull out my transcript and like my classes and be like, does this course transfer? Um, would this help me? Would this hurt me? Just asking like very specific questions like that has helped so much and I'm able to share that information um, on YouTube and also just like with my friends and stuff. It's just so helpful to go to the school and also it's just helped me um, gain like an understanding of the environment of each school because each school kind of has a different personality um, and like different areas that they get to work in. So like some work with um, X hospitals, some work with Y hospitals, some work with Z hospitals, and just knowing where you'll be and understanding the environment that you would be applying yourself to. But yes, something important to remember is that when you go to nursing school, you're going to do clinicals in certain hospitals that you may eventually apply for a job at and may eventually like live near. And so just knowing the environment that you're in, because that could potentially be where you end up wanting to stay. So if there's somewhere in particular that you really want to work, then it's just very helpful to have that, like kind of um, emerge into that environment and see if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, if you're not able to visit the schools, I did post, um, well, if you're in Texas at least, or you want to live in Texas, I posted some videos and I'll link those down below at UTMB 
Texas Women's, UT Health, Texas A&M, and Baylor. Baylor was my last one. So if you are interested in any of those programs, make sure you check out those videos or visit their open houses. Um, the way that I find those open houses is just by going on their websites or emailing them if they're not available and signing up for those early in advance and attending them. So yeah. I'm out of breath. All right, well that is it for today's video. Let me know if this has helped or if you have any other tips or any ideas or questions, please comment those down below and do your fellow YouTuber a favor and hit that red subscribe button because I'm just a broke college student and I'm just trying to make it work here. So hit that red subscribe button, like this video, comment, message me if you have any questions and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.